Congratulations! The time is coming close to when you will welcome your baby into the world. This video will guide you to the relevant areas of the hospital that you will experience on your journey. The delivery suite and maternity ward are located on level 4 of the main hospital. These areas have restricted access and can be accessed by ringing the bell on the intercom. Please telephone the delivery suite at 071 917 4676 before you arrive at the hospital. This is the delivery suite where 1,400 babies are born every year. We advise that one birthing partner accompanies you to the labour ward. Always bring your maternity chart to all hospital visits. This unit consists of an admission area or assessment room, bath and showering facilities, We also have a comfortable two-bedded area for induction of labour or early labour. There are three birthing suites. Each birthing suite contains a birthing bed, a cardiotocograph monitor to monitor the baby's heart rate, a resuscitare. This is used if your baby requires additional care, for example, oxygen a trolley, including a birth pack, Entinox, which is a gas used for pain relief in labour, drip stands for intravenous fluids, TENS machines can be rented from a local pharmacy. Please ask staff for details. All options of pain relief are available and your midwife will guide you through all of your choices. Hydrotherapy, or taking a bath, is an excellent form of pain relief during early labour. This is recommended if your membranes are intact, if your waters have not yet broken. The bath is situated at the end of the corridor. Entinox. Piped Entinox is available in all birthing rooms. Pethidine. This is a narcotic once-off injection that is frequently used in conjunction with Entinox. Epidural. This is cited by an anaesthetist in the birthing room. Written consent prior to the procedure is required. Birthing balls and cub supports are also available. Cub stands for Comfortable Upright Birth and this is now accepted as the modern birthing stool. Now we will show you various positions for labour and birth. Being active and remaining upright during labour can distract you from any discomfort you may be feeling. When you are upright, your womb tilts forward during contractions. This means you will have better contractions and less pain. Contractions are stronger and more effective when you are upright. This could mean your labour is shorter. Gravity will help your baby move down the birth passage. Pregnant women who are upright and active tend to need less pain relief or interventions to get the baby out. Your baby will get a better oxygen supply and will be in a better position. The lower part of your spine can move better when you are upright. This means the birth canal can widen and make room for the baby's head. Pelvic joints can expand and move, which means less pressure on nerves. Midwives actively support women who choose hypnobirthing or other complementary therapies during labor. 
immediate skin-to-skin -skin and early breastfeeding are encouraged in the delivery suite. If you have an epidural, you can still take advantage of the effect of gravity by altering the position of the bed to help you stay more upright and lean forwards on a gym ball, gently rocking forwards and backwards. A number of women will experience caesarean birth. This birth takes place on level eight in the operating theater. A midwife will accompany you and your birth partner to the operating theater, supporting you through this birthing experience. The postnatal ward is located on the same corridor as the delivery suite. After the birth of your baby, your midwife will accompany you and your baby to this ward. The midwives on the maternity ward will offer all the help, advice and support you may need to care for yourself and your newborn baby. At Sligo University Hospital, we actively encourage and support breastfeeding. NICU or Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. If your baby needs specialist care, they will be cared for in the special care baby unit known as NICU, where you or your birth partner are welcome to care for your newborn baby. We ask you to observe hand washing policies and restrict visitors in this area as your baby may be vulnerable to infection. Partners may visit the postnatal ward from 9am to 8.30pm daily. Grandparents and siblings of the newborn may only visit between 6.30pm and 8.30pm. No other visitors are allowed except in exceptional circumstances. This is at the discretion of the clinical midwife manager or midwife in charge. We aim to provide you with a positive birthing experience and look forward to welcoming you to our hospital. The delivery suite can be contacted at any time to answer questions regarding your pregnancy or labour. Please phone 071 917 4676. Hello, welcome to Sligo University Hospital. My name is Juliana Henry and I am the Director of Midwifery. We are delighted you have chosen to have your baby here with us. All of our staff are here to help and support you to have a positive pregnancy and birthing experience. And we look forward to meeting you.
Hello, I'm Dr. Anne Spellman. I'm a GP here in Sligo. Today, I've been asked to give you a brief run through of combined antenatal care between your GP and Sligo University Hospital. First off, congratulations on your pregnancy. This is an exciting time for most, but it can also be a little bit daunting. You may feel nervous and have a lot of questions, which is normal. Hopefully, this video will help. The majority of women will have done an at-home pregnancy test after a missed period or following on from fertility treatment. They will then make an appointment with their GP to confirm the pregnancy. At this initial visit, your GP might begin by finding out if this is a planned or an unplanned pregnancy. If this is an unplanned or crisis pregnancy, your GP will be able to help you through this. Next, you will be asked what was the date of the first day of your last menstrual period. This is to find out how many weeks pregnant you are and also to estimate your due date. You will be asked if you have ever been pregnant before and some details about any previous pregnancies. Usually, depending on if you are well known or not to the GP who you attend, we will also check for any relevant medical history or what medications you may take. At this point, you may be asked to give a urine sample. It might be handy to have brought one from home. Even though you have taken a test yourself, we like to confirm that you are pregnant. You may also have your blood pressure, weight and height checked. Your GP may also inquire about any specific pregnancy symptoms that you may have and talk you through this, for example, morning sickness. The rest of the consultation will typically involve advice regarding certain foods to avoid, what supplements and vitamins are advised, the importance of avoiding smoking and alcohol while pregnant, with the option to refer you to relevant services for help with this if necessary, and what vaccines are recommended, at what stages. Your GP will notify the hospital of your pregnancy and you will receive a letter by post with an appointment for your first scan. Combined antenatal care is free for all pregnant women in Ireland. This covers your GP and hospital visits. If you wish to be referred to a consultant privately, your GP can also arrange this. You will have to provide your PPS number and may be asked to sign a form to opt into this scheme. Your GP visits will be before 12 weeks, at 24 weeks, 30, 34, 37 and 39 weeks. There is an additional visit if it is your second or subsequent pregnancy and further visits if you have a chronic illness. There is also a baby check at two weeks of age and a six week checkup for you and your baby. At each of your visits, you will have the opportunity to ask any questions. Your GP will check your blood pressure and urine. From 24 weeks on, you will likely have the fetal heartbeat checked. At your booking visit in Kingsbridge Hospital, you will be given a green folder. This contains all the details pertaining to your pregnancy. You will need to bring this to all of your appointments, including those with your GP. That way, your GP and hospital team can easily share information. Should you ever feel that you need to see your GP between the outlined appointments, please do so. Don't put off anything that you are worried about. Finally, I wish you all the best on your pregnancy journey. Congratulations again.
Hello, my name is Leona Mulvey and I am the Clinical Midwife Manager at the Antenatal Clinic Kingsbridge. Congratulations on your pregnancy and you are very welcome here today. As this is your first visit to us, we would like to take this opportunity to orientate you around the clinic and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask us. On each visit to the clinic, you check in at the reception desk and also make sure to check out and make a follow-up appointment before you leave for your next visit. A sample of urine is required each time you come to the antenatal clinic and is also required for visits to the GP. On your booking visit, you will receive your green notes or chart, which will contain all the information pertaining to your pregnancy. It is very important to bring this chart with you for each clinic visit to the ultrasound scan department, to your GP and to any appointment related to the pregnancy. At the booking visit, a midwife will confirm your personal details and medical history. They will then record your weight, height, blood pressure, heart rate, test your urine and also offer a carbon monoxide breath test. We have an information leaflet explaining the carbon monoxide testing process if you would like to read it before taking the test. The midwife will then discuss your mental health and give you a lot of information to guide you through a healthy pregnancy. If booking bloods have not been taken by your GP, they will be taken at this visit with your consent. Every woman will be seen by a consultant obstetrician and pathways of care will be discussed, which include supported care, this is midwifery led care in the hospital and in the community, assisted care, which is led by an advanced midwife practitioner, and consultant led care. You will be advised about antenatal education classes and how to enrol. We are here to offer support throughout your pregnancy and are happy to answer any questions you may have. Gestational diabetes is one of the most common health problems that can happen during pregnancy. It affects as many as 12% of pregnancies in Ireland and can lead to serious problems for both mum and baby. Certain women are at higher risk of developing gestational diabetes. For example, if you are overweight, 
if you have a family member with diabetes, if you had gestational diabetes in a previous pregnancy, or depending on your ethnic background. If you are at risk, you will receive a blood test for gestational diabetes between 24 and 28 weeks of pregnancy. If you are diagnosed, there are day-to-day -day changes you can make to stay healthy. How much exercise you get and what kind of food you eat can have important effects on your health and your baby's health. But what happens when you have gestational diabetes and how can diet and exercise help? Food and drinks are broken down in your digestive system. The sugar they contain is absorbed into your bloodstream. But sugar needs insulin to work. Insulin is made by the pancreas and helps sugar get into your cells. Insulin acts like a key that lets the sugar move from the bloodstream into the cells of your body where it is used for energy. Pregnancy hormones change the way insulin works in your body. In the later stages of pregnancy, these changes make it difficult for insulin to unlock the cells and allow the sugar to enter. This is what is known as insulin resistance. Some insulin resistance is normal in pregnancy, but this means that your pancreas needs to work extra hard to keep blood sugar levels in a healthy range. When you have gestational diabetes, your pancreas is not able to keep up. As a result, too much sugar is left in the blood. However, a carefully planned diet with high fibre carbohydrates and no added sugar can make it easier for your body to manage the sugar in your blood. Exercise will also help keep blood sugar low as it improves insulin's ability to unlock the cells and uses up sugar for energy. If blood sugar is controlled, your chances of a healthy pregnancy are the same as a non-diabetic mum. This makes diet and exercise powerful tools for a healthy pregnancy. However, if blood sugar is not well controlled, this can lead to problems in both mum and baby. In a study of 23,000 pregnant women around the world, researchers found a link between high blood sugar in mum and babies that had grown too big. Researchers also found a link between high blood sugar and preeclampsia, premature delivery, need for caesarean section, birth injury and abnormal sugar control in baby. Diabetes during pregnancy can also put you and your baby at risk for problems later in life, including type 2 diabetes and heart disease. But there are actions you can take. Changes in diet and exercise, combined with close monitoring, can successfully manage blood sugar in 7 out of 10 pregnancies. So no better time to start than now. To learn more about Irish research on maternal and newborn health, you can visit the HRB Mother and Baby Clinical Trial Network.
Hi everybody, uh, I'm Marie Edith Byrne. I work in Sligo University Hospital as the perinatal mental health midwife. So let's talk about your mental health after having a baby, okay? So how common are perinatal mental health issues? Well, one in five women will struggle with their mental health around this time. Um, first of all, just to be clear, anybody can suffer with mental health during their pregnancy, but you can be predisposed, okay? So let's identify some of the contributing factors, okay? So maybe, number one, you might have had a previous mental health problem. Um, episodes of depression in your past, anxiety, OCD, eating disorders, or maybe you've had an episode of psychosis in the past that would inform us that you were predisposed this time. Biological issues, anything like sleep, diet, IVF, a difficult pregnancy, pain, um, anything like that can trigger your mental health to deteriorate. Emotional causes, a breakup of a relationship, a major life event, losing somebody, excessive worry, lack of support, lack of family, lack of friends, it's kind of a vulnerable time, you need these people in your corner. Difficult childhood experiences, so maybe you've had an episode in the past of trauma or abuse and something could come up for you this time. If you've got low self-esteem as well, you may feel that you're not going to be a good mum and that can feed into the negative thoughts. Stressful living conditions, living in poverty, addiction, overcrowding, maybe a domestic violence scenario. Unable to advocate for yourself, so if, um, if you're not able to talk up for yourself. And it's not just us, it's dads too. So one in t 10 dads will experience depression during their partner's pregnancy. And when a woman has postnatal depression, maybe 20 to 50% of those dads will also have depression. So it's just good to make you aware of that. Now, just to acknowledge guys that most mums struggle to adjust between pain, sleep deprivation, the hormones, the baby blues, the whole lot. These things trigger a, a depression. So if you are crying every day, if your appetite is off and you're sleeping really badly, or you've become super anxious about the baby, your mood is low, you're feeling overwhelmed, for a, a week or so, you know you may be in trouble. So at that stage, go down to your GP, you may have postnatal depression or anxiety, and it's kind of the same coin, you know? Struggling with your mental health does not make you a bad mum. Uh, be aware of your own risk factors, okay? Discuss your issues honestly with your partner, with your family, your friends, the more people that know the better and with that the care providers so your midwives your GP your PHN and let's normalize mental health otherwise we won't ever um, rectify it get help as home at home as soon as you can delegate make plans put things in place early if you can if you're prescribed medication get them take them and come off them a number of months uh, later on don't let yourself deteriorate Recognize your own strengths, your own resilience, your own resources, your coping strategies, what's worked before for you in the past. Locate a tribe, so a toddler group, a baby swim group, the library, a yoga class, whatever is local to you, just that you've some part of the day that's your own, okay? And it takes a village to raise a child. And last word, one day is okay, one week is not, okay? Thanks everybody for listening. See you soon, bye-bye. Welcome to the Fetal Assessment Unit here in Sligo University. My name is Sheila Mulderig, Clinical Midwife Specialist. Our service runs Monday to Friday from 7am to 5.30pm. We provide scans for all stages of pregnancy, including early pregnancy, dating scans, anomaly and growth scans. We require a full bladder to enable us to perform your scan. If you're attending for your anomaly scan, we request that you have your consent form filled in your green chart. 
We look forward to meeting you in your pregnancy journey and wish you all the best. Hello, my name is Sinead Thompson and I'm a community midwife at the National Maternity Hospital. I designed and created Labour Hopscotch in 2015 in response to an increase in the epidural rates and also in medical interventions during labour and birth. The principle of Labour Hopscotch is to encourage optimal fetal positioning. This means having your baby's head in the optimum position lined up so it can descend into the pelvis in the optimum position for labour. When this happens, it triggers the spontaneous onset of labour. When women go into spontaneous labour, it's less likely that they'll need induction and that means that there'll hopefully be less intervention in their births. The Labour Hopscotch Framework aims to support and promote natural and active labour. It is encouraged for all women, regardless of the care pathway that they choose for their birth, but encourages more natural methods of pain relief where possible for as long as possible in labour. Using the idea of the game hopscotch we all played years ago, each of the steps can be undertaken in, to remain active during labour. The process can start at home, beginning at the bottom of the hopscotch board when you're more active and mobile. The bottom square of the labour hopscotch is called the mobilised square and it aims at promoting optimal feet position. There are four activities associated with this step and it's important that these four positions are practised throughout the antenatal period in preparation for your labour. Your midwife will explain the positions to you during your pregnancy. Our research findings, which we published in 2019 in our research study, showed that women who practice labour hopscotch had reduced epidural rates, reduced the caesarean section rates, increased spontaneous onset of labour and vaginal deliveries. And most of all, there was an increase in birth satisfaction rates. Having a positive birthing experience makes a smoother transition to parenthood.
Hello, my name is Dr. Julie Higgins. I'm a midwife who works for the Celta Hospital Group. And today I'm going to talk to you about using a birthing ball in pregnancy and labor. If you have any questions, you can talk to your midwife or physiotherapist. It is very important to choose the right size ball for yourself and to make sure that it is safe to use. All of the Celta Group maternity hospitals recommend you buy a birthing ball that is compliant with the European Device Quality Directive. Information on companies that acknowledge their compliance and to learn more about finding the right size ball for yourself are available in our online information leaflet, The Use of the Birthing Ball in Pregnancy and Labour. First things first, to sit on the ball safely, you steady the base with your hands as you sit down. Put your feet firmly on the ground, shoulder width apart, with your hips about 10 centimeters above your knees. Being active and staying upright for as long as possible during labor has many benefits for you and your baby. Using a birthing ball during your pregnancy aids relaxation, may help to strengthen your abdominal and lower back muscles, eases back pain, and allows you to practice positions for labor and birth. Positions to use on the birthing ball can be bouncing up and down, circling, doing figure of eight and kneeling. When you practice these positions during your pregnancy, you become very familiar with them and you're more comfortable moving into these positions during labor. A very common position women adopt in labor is the kneeling position. This position encourages physical and mental relaxation Lying forward on a birthing ball can help to ease the pressure in your back, which most women experience at some point during labor. It is also a very natural position to birth your baby. To get into the kneeling position, first kneel, seated on your heels, with your legs slightly apart, arms and hands resting on the ball with your head turned to one side. Raise yourself up on your knees, lean over the birthing ball, and try rocking side to side or front to back. You can place a pillow under your knees for extra comfort. I've just mentioned a few positions that you can use with the birthing ball here. You will receive more information about other positions to use with your ball from your midwife or physiotherapist at your antenatal class. Hello, my name is Natalia and I am going to discuss and explain what fetal monitoring is, why and how we do it. During your pregnancy, labour and birth, various assessments are carried out to ensure everything is progressing normally and your baby is not experiencing any difficulties. One such assessment is listening to the baby's heartbeat. Most babies go through pregnancy, labour and birth and are born without any problems. However, there are some babies who have difficulties and the best way of finding out when a baby is experiencing difficulties, is to listen to their heartbeat. You will be offered to have your baby's heartbeat monitored, known as fetal monitoring, during your pregnancy, labor and birth. Fetal monitoring can be done in two ways. Intermittent auscultation, listening for a short time at regular intervals with a Doppler or Pinard's stethoscope. Continuous electronic fetal monitoring, EFM, known as continuous monitoring using a cardiotocograph, CTG machine, that draws a graph of your baby's heart rate and your surges or contractions. Intermittent auscultation is monitoring your baby's heartbeat by using a pinard, stethoscope or handheld Doppler. During your birth, the midwife will palpate your abdomen to feel for a contraction. They will listen to your baby's heartbeat for a full minute at the end of a surge or contraction. I'm going to just listen to your baby's heartbeat for a minute with the pinard. Is that okay? As labour progresses, your baby's heartbeat will be checked more often. In the first stage of labour, your baby's heartbeat will be monitored every 15 minutes and every five minutes in the second stage of labour. Your pulse will also be monitored at the same time to differentiate between your heart rate and your baby's heart rate. A 
cardiotocograph CTG carries out continuous fetal monitoring or electronic fetal monitoring. It produces a visual display and in some cases a paper recording of both the baby's heartbeat, the mother's heartbeat and any uterine activity. Two discs called transducers are placed on the abdomen with some gel. These are held in place with two elastic belts. One disc picks up the baby's heartbeat and the other disc picks up the frequency of the mother's uterine activity. The machine produces a continuous graph of both of these referred to as the trace. The machine also produces a beating or pulsing sound that represents your baby's heartbeat. Your blood pressure, heart rate, temperature and oxygen levels will be all checked regularly throughout your pregnancy and birth. You may also be given a clicker to push every time you feel your baby move. Vanessa, this is a little monitor to measure your baby's movements. So every time you feel your baby move, can you click the top button there? Mobile CTG monitors are available to enable you to mobilise and change position while being monitored. If you are admitted to hospital with any issues after 26 weeks of pregnancy, a daily CTG will be recommended. If your pregnancy or birth is considered high risk for any reason, a CTG will be the recommended method of fetal monitoring during your baby's birth. A list of common reasons where continuous fetal monitoring is recommended can be found in your fetal monitoring leaflet. Your healthcare practitioner will discuss the recommended method of fetal, fetal monitoring with you. They will answer any questions you have and your consent will be sought prior to carrying out any fetal monitoring. Welcome to Delivery Suite at Sligo University Hospital. When you present here for assessment, you will be seen by a midwife. During this assessment, the midwife will undertake a series of observations. They will check your blood pressure, your temperature, pulse, and also take a sample of urine. They'll assess your baby's heart rate, either with the Pinard, Doplex, or CTG monitor. They may also undertake an internal assessment with your consent. A review by an obstetrician may also be a part of this initial review. Based on the findings of the midwife's assessment and the doctor's review, you may be transferred to a birth room if you are in established labour. If you are not in established labour, then either you are transferred over to the maternity ward or discharged home with advice. Once you are in established labour, that is that your cervix is 4 cm and you are contracting regularly, and if you are considered low risk, you may be able to avail of our home from home room here on the delivery suite, provided that it is available. The home from home room has a pool for water immersion in labour, a Bluetooth speaker for playing your music, birthing mats for remaining active in labour and adopting different birthing positions, and also blackout blinds. Alternatively, if the home from home room is in use or unavailable to you due to a clinical reason, then we have three other birth rooms available on delivery suite. 
you may have one support person with you throughout your birth experience on delivery suite. After you have given birth, you are transferred to the maternity ward for ongoing care.